Have you ever noticed just when you begin to feel ready and certain for what's next in life, like a big talk, for example, or whatever your version of a red carpet event is, something unexpected happens, like your fog machine gets vetoed, or <laughs> you get a new boss, you have a breakup, you go through a health scare, and all of a sudden, your clear path forward is no longer clear. You find yourself in a fog, and it's what I call a transition fog. Now, that transition fog can come from a number of things. It can come from a very positive event like a job promotion or an unexpected event like a job loss, having a baby, launching your baby to college, taking the stage and stepping into the spotlight. It's unsettling, trust me. Now, that fog has you somewhere between the way it was and the way it will be. And the space in between is called uncertainty. And uncertainty, well, it brings more fog. And that fog is really um, the result of two things, our not knowing what's next and our lack of control and the emotions that that stirs up our worry, our fear, and our, our anxiety. And with that, it limits our view. We can't see. And it begs the question, now what? 2008 was my big transition fog life moment. I was sitting in the sunroom of my house with my face in my hands, an unexpectedly single mom, with two little boys, a consulting practice, but no guaranteed income and no benefits. And a thick, dense fog had just rolled in over my perfect life plan. And I had no idea how I'd find my way through it. So I began to navigate that uncertain time the same way we do real life road fog. Think about our instincts. Our first instinct is to slow down. Trust me, I wanted to race through that uncertain time as quickly as I possibly could, but I just couldn't. I had to slow down. Besides, I didn't want to hit anything in my path or drive off the road. My second instinct was to turn on the low beams. It turns out they illuminate a stretch about 350 feet in front of us, and that's good enough. There was no sense in trying to see too far forward. I simply couldn't. Think about it. When you turn on your high beams, all it does is reflect the fog back on you and obscure your view even further. My third instinct was to pull over. Get off the road. Sometimes the fog is so thick that you just have to pull over for a while. Now, it turns out these are some darn good instincts for navigating life changes and transition fog, too. Think about that. The idea of slowing down. Experts share that we think we're going really slowly in the fog, but we're actually going faster than we realize. You see, our brains actually register our speed relative to our surroundings, the, the buildings and the trees and the bushes that are flashing by. And in the fog, we can't see them. So we're actually making more progress and headway than we think we are, which is true during life change, too. That second instinct of turning on our low beams, it turns out that's all we need to do, is navigate what we can see one stretch at a time to ultimately get us to where we need to be. And that third instinct of pulling over, experts actually recommend it's far safer to get completely off the road and head to a parking lot and wait for that fog to clear. And there are times in our life's transitions where we need to let that fog clear. We need a temporary halt before we make a big decision. Or we need to gather some more information before we decide what our next move should be. Now, as I look back to my life gone sideways in 2008, here's what I learned. 
I really was going slowly, but I was making more headway than I even realized. The key was to focus on the headway. Not how far I had yet to go, but how far I had already come. And so I had to make this daily agreement with myself. And on the drive home from work, I would actually make myself list in my head any little bit of progress or headway I was making, and I would say out loud, damn, I'm good. <laughs> Every day, damn, I'm good. As for the low beams, thank God for them. They really reduced my anxiety. It reminded me that all I really needed to know was what was my next move and that I could really navigate that uncertainty one next move after the other. And that took a lot of pressure off. It's another good thing about low beams. They help us to see the potholes on our path. And there are potholes. There were three that I wrestled with. Probably just me, no one else in this audience. The first one was comparing myself to others. Everyone else looked to have a problem-free life. I really began to believe that at times. But the truth is, nobody has a problem-free, fog-free life. The danger was comparing what I knew was going on in my life to what I thought was going on in their life. And the more I did that, the more trouble I got into. The second pothole was the pothole of negative self-talk. It called me unlovable. It labeled me a fraud. The business consultant who helped others through their tough times was navigating her own tough times. It shoulded all over me. I said shoulded. <laughs> I should be moving faster. I should know what to do. I should be over this already. And the more I listened to it, the denser the fog got. I also had to worry about that pothole of impatience. I was impatient to get this time behind me. I was impatient to have a clear path open up for my anxiety to go away and just to laugh again. Now, if you think about it, you know that saying that every cloud has a silver lining? Fog's really just a cloud on the ground. So there are some silver linings, and I want you to think about that. The first of those is that maybe that change that's occurring for you is allowing you to question what is as good enough and moving you along to something better. What if that detour is taking you to some unexpected place, but a place full of possibility? And what if you are building a muscle to be ever more empathic to other people in their uncertainties? If 2008 had not happened to me, if my life had not been turned upside down, I wouldn't be doing half the things I am, having just written a book or standing in front of you today. You see, I've come to think about fog differently. Fog is simply a freaking opportunity for growth. <laughs> it's just that we don't realize it until we're through it. And it's only in the rearview mirror that we see the gift of the fog and how much we've grown. The famous American author Joseph Conrad wrote, it isn't the clear-sighted who rule the world. Great achievements are accomplished in a blessed, warm fog. Now, we don't fear the light. We don't need to fear the darkness. And I'm here to tell you, you don't need to fear your fog. Thank you. Thank you.